The Trinity is a, is, is a way or try, is a method of trying to describe God as love. That's really what you need to know. Without the Trinity, God can be loving, but he is not love itself because love needs an object to love. And if God is merely loving, then he must create something to love, which means God is incomplete. But how can God be incomplete? Instead, what the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity is trying to say, among other things, is that within the one God exists this Trinity of this community of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's because of that, God is love itself. And creation is not necessary for God. It is the loving result of who God is. And with that, I give you Joe Wiley. I'm Joe. Um, some of you may know me uh, from serving at church. I'm in the praise band, and I also do acolyting every now and again. Um, but let me tell you a bit about what I do um, at my high school. Um, I'm involved in the band, and uh, I'm also involved in drama. But a club that I am a part of is um, the Interact Club, which is a sort of high school version of uh, Rotary International. And one of their responsibilities is uh, global change. And so two years ago, the club decided to fund a trip to Nicaragua every year, send a few students down, about 10 students. Um, and I never thought I'd be able to actually go on this trip. I had always wanted to, um, but I just, it was out of my financial you know, reach. Um, but this year, I decided I'd give it a try. Um, I would try and fundraise and everything. And I uh, went to the church first. And the church was nice enough to actually pay for the whole trip. It was extremely generous. Um, and it really was a life-changing trip. Um, so our trip, our main goal was to help build a house in Nicaragua for a family in need. Um, we went to an area of the country called Chacraseca. It's a large city or large town, um, but small communities within that town. So like about 10 families sort of in a circle, sort of like little mini town centers all around this area. Um, and it's a very impoverished area um, due to over farming from cotton and things like that. There's a lot of dust. It's almost like the Dust Bowl down there. Um, it's a lot of poverty. Um, but one thing that I noticed was everybody was extremely happy. They were grateful. Um, and family was extremely important down there. Um, hi. Uh, we worked on the building. The ground was very interesting to work with. We uh, dug the um, foundation and mixed um, cement. Um, and rather than sort of building the house for the family, we were building the house with the family, which I thought was really cool. I didn't even realize we'd meet the family, but we were there. They were there with us the whole time, helping us, guiding us through the process, explaining how they wanted it to look and uh, how they wanted it done. Um, and I thought that was going to be most of the trip was just building the house. But we actually um, were able to have a lot of interactions. My knowledge of the Spanish language is incredibly limited. Uh, but I was able, I knew enough from Spanish class to um, have a few conversations with people. I could talk about soccer and things like that with them. Um, it was incredibly cool. We uh, worked with a local group of teenagers who um, were sort of being funded by the, um, the company that we were working with. Uh, FNE International basically was the uh, group that was helping us go down to this trip and they fund kids from elementary school to college um, if they weren't English. So they basically, we were working with these teenagers who had been learning English with FNE for a long time um, and we helped plant trees with them for a little bit and they made fun of my accent. They didn't like how I spoke Spanish so it was kind of funny. Um, we worked with a lot of different families. We went to a village um, about an hour from where we were staying, um, and the ground was all clay. And this village, for thousands of years, has specialized in pottery. Um, and every single family there basically um, had sort of a system of how they made pottery. The uh, father would make the clay. We helped them mix the clay and stuff, and sort of like crushing grapes for wine, but you're crushing the clay and sort of knead it. 
um, and then they make the pots and the sons uh, paint it and carve it. Um, incredibly intricate work and they do hundreds of these pots and that's how they make their income. They, the average income there is about $100 American dollars um, a month and that's enough to sustain them. So it was really cool to help them with that and just to see the process and how everybody in the family was working together to basically help the community. Um, we also went to a bee farm, which is a new thing in Nicaragua. I was talking about over farming earlier, um, and one way that they're sort of compensating for all the over farming and loss of habitat is um, these bee farms. They're setting aside pieces of woods that are remaining untouched and basically just sitting there as forest, and it actually helps with bees there able to produce a lot of honey and this one man that we met was actually the president of the bee um, sort of association in Nicaragua. He would go all around the country and um, basically start up farms for people and offer to buy their honey for a few years just to sort of get them off the ground and has sort of made a huge difference in the community. Um, his father, um, an older man, actually made the um, he makes the beehives, which they have a special sort of box that they've created themselves, um, and they make sort of the bee smokers. And then his wife sews the bee suits that are sold all around the world, and he actually farms bees. So it was so cool to see how they're all working together. He has kids who are always helping. Um, he took us on a tour around his property and just seeing all the amazing techniques. He met with people all around the world from Canada and China who also farm bees to learn their techniques and tell them about his. Um, so it was really cool to see how they're trying to solve a lot of the problems that they're having with their farms in Nicaragua right now. Um, we were able to go to um, a couple of the cities. We went to um, one of the oldest cities, Managua, and um, another city, Leon, which we were right near. Um, and every time I we went to Leon, there was this little kid who would uh, play soccer with us and his bare feet just running around the streets. So that was always fun. Um, so it was, it was a really cool trip. We got to meet all kinds of people, and every chance I got, I would talk to people, um, ask them just how their day was or what they do on a normal day, uh, what their favorite soccer team was, things like that. Um, the political climate there was interesting. The people were extremely friendly and happy to see us, but you couldn't really tell by the graffiti. There's a lot, there was a lot of um, revolutions in the 80s um, and a lot of anti-America, so it was definitely humbling to be in a place where you're not always feeling welcome, um, which was totally new to me. Um, there was a lot of just sort of swastikas on American flags and things like that. People just really were not loving America <laughs> down there. Um, but it was amazing to see how the people were uh, receiving us and our mission and just appreciating every minute of it. Um, so. It was uh, pretty interesting. There were, we were working with um, the Rotary Club, our local Rotary Club. So a lot of older members of the community and business owners were down there with us. Um, and it was cool because Interact never really gets to work with Rotary, um, except during the summer. So it was cool to actually meet these people who have been supporting us throughout high school and our club. Um, it was interesting to see them just sort of enjoying the trip as much as we, is, as we were. Um, a seven-year-old man actually did a, a triple flip off a uh, giant deck of a lagoon that we were at at one point, so that was interesting to see. Um, and it was just an amazing trip. It was a really life-changing experience um, and something that I definitely want to do again. It was my first time out of the country, but um, I plan on traveling more in the future. I want to keep on going to Central America and Europe and all these different places. Um, I'm going to college um, in Maine University, Southern Maine and I'm uh, actually studying tourism and hospitality and sustainable tourism and ecotourism, things like that. Um, so I'd really like to work to keep on doing trips like this where rather than just going and seeing a community, going and helping them with what they need rather than what you think they need, which it was really interesting to see the projects that you could tell were done by people who just were looking for something to do and projects that were done that the community really wanted them to do. Um, and just the difference that that made. Um, so I just want to thank you again for helping me get here. I never thought I'd be able to go on this trip. It was really life-changing and definitely something I'm going to remember for a very long time. So thank you all.